Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Edexcel um, C3 June 2019 paper. This is um, in kind of like um, relevant to what we're doing in P3 now. Okay, the new syllabus is P3. So this is like differentiation. And here we've got the quotient rule and we've got other types of differentiation in this particular question in the other part. So it's all dealing with stuff which is in P3 differentiation now. Okay, so the first question here is you're, you're given a function y equals 2x minus 1 all cubed over 3x minus 2. And of course, x cannot be 2 thirds, otherwise it would be undefined. So we have to find dy dx, writing your answer as a single fraction in simplest form. Now, in this question here, one of the very common mistakes that people make, all right, especially when they're first starting the differentiation in, in P3, is they would differentiate the numerator and differentiate the denominator like separately. So they'll differentiate the numerator, you, they might use a chain rule, and then they'll write the answer down on the numerator. And then they'll differentiate the denominator, give you three, and they'll write the answer. And they think that's the answer. That's how you, no, that's not how you differentiate something. Okay, if you have to differentiate a product even, f of x times u of x of two separate functions, okay, with respect to x, this is not the same as differentiating f of x with respect to x, multiplying that by the differential of g of x with respect to x. And the same thing goes for a quotient. When you have to differentiate a quotient of two separate functions with respect to x, it is not the same as differentiating the numerator with respect to x divided by differentiating the denominator with respect to x. They're not the same. For multiplication and division, you cannot do that. Okay, That's something that's really important for us to understand. It's not like, for example, when you have two functions added together. If I want to differentiate f of x plus g of x, two separate functions added together with respect to x, yes, I can differentiate f of x separately, and add to that the differential of g of x separately. That works. All right. That's why we can multiply. We, we can, for example, take 3x squared plus 2x cubed plus, you know, for example, 1 over x. We can differentiate something like that by differentiating each term separately and just writing them as, as sums of each other. Okay, that's fine. But for multiplication and for division, no. So that's what we can't do. That's a common, common mistake that people make when they first start differentiating something like this. They will think you can differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately. We have something called the quotient rule, which is based upon the product rule. Okay, and um, we don't need to go into the derivation of this, but the, the, the quotient rule is actually quoted in the formula book, although I don't really like to look at that. I like to set it up in this particular way that I'm going to show you. And then, you know, this, it makes my life a lot easier. So what you do is you call the numerator u. So u is the numerator, which is 2x minus 1 cubed. And v is the denominator, which is 3x minus 2. So I'm going to write u equals 2x minus 1 to the power of 3. And next to it, to the right of it, I'll write v equals 3x minus 2. Now what we must do is write down underneath u, we write down the differential of u which we can use the chain rule. This is like a polynomial function, something raised to the power of three. So you multiply by the power, you keep everything inside the same, you take one from the power, and then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. What happened there? My pen has disappeared, one second. You multiply by the differential of what's inside the function, which is two. Okay, so that gives us six times two x minus one squared. And the differential of v, v dash, you can call it, that's going to be 3. When you differentiate 3x minus 2, you, you, the 3x, it drops the x, and the minus 2 becomes 0. Now, when we use the quotient rule, when we're finding dy dx, what you do is you always start from the right side, the top right, and you kind of come across. So this has to multiply that. So it's going to be v times u dash. And then you put minus, when it's the quotient rule, minus, then you have u times v dash. Okay, so it's that times the, the differential of the, of the second one. Over, and then for the quotient rule, you have v squared. If it was a product, if this was multiplied by that, if it was 2x minus 1 cubed times 3x minus 2, we would do the same thing. Um, I would do it exactly the same way, except this would have a plus, and you wouldn't divide by v squared. 
It would just be a plus between them. So it would be this times this times that plus that times that. And nothing divided, it would be a plus between them. That's how I do it. That's this times this plus that times that. Anyway, so that's how we're going to use the uh, quotient rule here. So now I'm going to just write in everything as we have written it. So we have dy dx, therefore, is going to be this times that. So that's going to be 6 times um, 2x minus 1 squared times 3x minus 2 minus, and you have 3 times 2x minus 1 cubed, all of that over v squared, which is 3x minus 2 squared. So we want to simplify this as a single fraction in its simplest form. So this is not right in the simplest form. Now what some people would do here, is they would start expanding everything and then try to simplify it. But if you can spot something that will help you to make life easier, make life easier. Now I notice I have a bracket 2x minus 1 and I have a bracket 2x minus 1 here. Okay, over here it's 2x minus 1 squared, over here it's 2x minus 1 cubed. So it's a common factor. The one with the lower power is the common factor. So I've got from 6 and 3 the common factor of 3 in these two terms. From the brackets, I've got 2x minus 1 squared, which is a common factor. The one with the lower power is the one that's common. I can That's the highest common factor of these two terms. I open up the bracket, so I have to think about what do I have to multiply this by to give me that? Well, I, have, I need a 2 to make that into a 6, and I need a 3x minus 2. If I multiply these two together, I'm going to get this exactly. That will be 3 times 2 is 6. 2x minus 1 squared times 3x minus 2. And what do I have to do to, for, to multiply this by to give me that? What do I have to multiply this by to give me that? Well, the 3 is already there. I have a minus. The 3 is already there. The only thing that I need is 2x minus 1. Because 2x minus 1 squared times 2x minus 1 gives you 2x minus 1 cubed. So the only thing missing is the 2x minus 1 from that. And then in the denominator, I still have my 3x minus 2 all squared. Okay, so now I can continue. I have now 3 times 2x minus 1 squared. Now this is going to give me, if I expand these brackets, I have 6x minus 4 minus 2x, and be careful here, plus 1. Over, there's a squared here, by the way over 3x minus 2 squared. So now, finally, I can simplify that last part there. So I have 3 times 2x minus 1 squared, and this is going to be 6x minus 4x, which is uh, so 2x, sorry, which is 4x, and minus 4 plus 1, which is minus 3, uh, over 3x minus 2 squared. And I can leave it as that. I don't need to do any expansions or anything. That's fine. That's a single fraction in its simplest form. Okay, it's factorized. Something expanded, something factorized. They're both simplest. Like, for example, if I have 4x plus 4, I can write that like this, or I can write it as 4 times x plus 1. They're both the same. They're both equal to each other, and they're both considered simplified. Okay, factorizing isn't more simplified than something not being factorized. So I can leave this like this. It's absolutely fine. And that's the answer to part um, 1, question 2, part 1, part A. Okay, so there's the answer. 3 times 2x minus 1 squared times 4x minus 3 over 3x minus 2 squared. So I think I'm going to need the answer. Okay, so let me just take it all with me for part 2. Okay, so part B. There's 2A, 2 part 1, part B. So we have this. All right, so it says, hence find the set of values of x for which dy dx is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so where the gradient is positive. So we have 3 times 2x minus 1 squared times 4x minus 3 all over 3x minus 2 squared is greater than or equal to 0. So we got to solve this inequality. Right now, in order to solve this inequality, because this is dy dx, right? So we want to find what is greater than 0. So we're finding where the gradient is greater than or equal to 0, right? So now, to solve this inequality, I need to get rid of this, this denominator. So I need to multiply both sides by the denominator. Now, the problem with multiplying both sides of an inequality by something which is unknown is if the thing is negative, it will change the direction of the inequality sign. But 
we see that 3x minus 2 is all squared. So we know that for sure this must be greater than or equal to 0. All right? It must be greater than or equal to 0 for sure. All right? It can't equal 0 either. We know that it's greater than 0. Why? Because we know that they told us that x is not equal to... We know that x is not equal to 2 thirds, as they told us in the question here. All right? That will cause it to be undefined. So that means this must be greater than or equal greater than zero. So this must be positive. This is definitely something positive. Okay? Because you're taking something, you're squaring it. So there's no problem then multiplying both sides of the inequality by something which is positive. Okay? It, the inequality sign stays the same. All right? It's only when it's negative, it changes. That's why when you're multiplying both sides of an inequality by something that's algebraic, you don't, you can't do it unless you square that thing. And then you know for sure it's positive, and then you can go ahead and do it. So here we can multiply both sides by 3x minus 2 squared. Okay. Um, therefore, we can multiply by um, 3x minus 2 squared. So if I multiply both sides by 3x minus 2 squared, this side becomes 3 times 2x minus 1 cubed times, sorry, squared, not cubed. Okay. Uh, squared times 4x minus 3 greater than 0. We can even divide by that 3 there. So we're left with this. 2x minus 1 squared times 4x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So we want to find the set of values for which this is true. So this is like a cubic inequality, you could say. All right. And we have here, we have to remember how to draw the graph f of x equals, let's not call it f of x. What was it called? Was that called f of x? No, it wasn't. So yeah, I'll write f of x equals Okay, so we you know how to draw. Uh, we have to know how to draw a cubic curve, right? So if you have a curve f of x equals two x minus one squared times four x minus three, this has got a repeated root when x equals a half. That's a repeated root, and it have x equals three quarters. That's a single root. A repeated root. The curve turns on the axis. Could be this way or this way, and a single root. It cuts the axis at that point. Okay, so we know this is cubic, all right, because it's got, you know, if you expand this, you're going to get x cubed. So we know this is cubic, okay, and we know that the x cubed has got a positive coefficient, right? So it's going to have this up, down, up shape. So we have to know how to do this sketching of curves for us. It makes it easy to solve this problem, all right? So if we were to sketch this curve, it's going to have this shape up, down, and up. And we know that it cross, it touches the x-axis at a half. So if I just draw a little um, axis now. Okay, it touches the x-axis at a half and three quarters. So half is before three quarters, so the half must be over here. All right, the half must be over here. Okay, and the three quarters must be there. So that's three quarters and that's a half. All right. So we want to see where is this equal to zero and above zero. Now we can see it's definitely equal to zero. It's definitely equal to zero at this point here. And it's greater than zero in this region here. Okay, it's less than zero, equal to zero, less than zero. So we can say that the solution to our problem here, okay, is when x is equal to a half, so we can say that dy dx is greater than or equal to zero when x is equal to a half and when x is greater than or equal to three quarters. Okay, so those are the set of values. If you want to write them in set notation, you can say x is equal to, x is such that x is equal to a half. Okay, or because it's a separate solution, x is such that x is greater than or equal to three quarters. Okay, you can say union of these two, or you can write them separately. It doesn't say in set notation, it just find the set of values of, of x for which. So both of these answers would be fine. Okay, so when x equals a half, it's equal to zero. When x is equal to three quarters or more, it's equal to and greater than zero. That's where the gradient function is above the x-axis. Okay, so there's a few important points here. It's only worth two marks. But that's how some of the P3 questions are. So some of the important points here are the fact that you can multiply by 3, 3x minus 2 squared because it's a positive value because whatever it is gets squared. And this is an inequality. 
so you can um, if it was if it wasn't squared then you wouldn't be able to multiply by it. you'd have to square it uh, you know square both sides of the equation and then proceed which would make things even more complicated but there we have it there's your answer to two part b um, now we're going to move on to two part two so it says given that y equals lin of one plus cosine two x and x cannot be 2n two, two plus 1 times pi over 2, otherwise it would be undefined, and n is an element of the integers for this um, n here, show that dy dx equals c times tan x, where c is a constant to be determined, and it says you may assume the double angle formula. Okay, so that means you don't have to prove the double angle formula, you can just quote them, that's what it's asked, saying here. All right? Now, so when we differentiate something in terms of lin, we have y equals start off y equals lin of one plus cosine of two x. Okay, uh, when we differentiate something like this, you say dy dx is equal to. So when you differentiate lin of x with respect to x, it becomes one over x. So this becomes one over whatever's inside this bracket, whatever's inside here, one over that. Okay, but as with all types of questions, when there's a function inside a function, you have to multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So you multiply by the differential of 1 plus cosine 2x. Now, differential of 1 is 0. The differential of cosine of something is minus sine of the same thing. But then you have, again, a function inside this function. So it's like a function... It's like a function inside a function inside a function, right? So you have to multiply by, this is a minus here, multiply by the differential of, the, of 2x, which is 2. So you end up with dy dx equals minus 2 sine 2x over 1 plus cosine 2x. All right, so now we want to show that this becomes c times tan x. And what we notice is, as I mentioned and gave us a clue here, um, we've got double angles. We want them to become a single angle. So we need that to know that the, the double angle formula, for example, the sine of 2 times an angle is equal to 2 times the sine of A times the cosine of A. So, you know, the sine of double, the double angle is equal to 2 times the sine of the single angle times the cosine of the single angle, right? That's one of the... Um, <coughs> one of the uh, results of the double angle formula that we can derive from finding sine a plus a if we want to that's sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a which is two sine a cosine a right so that's that comes from the fa the factor or the uh, the compound angle or the addition formula they call right and the other thing is cosine 2x so we know that cosine 2a we can express this in three different ways we can express this as cosine squared a minus sine squared a and that is derived directly from using cosine a plus a because this becomes cosine a times cosine a cosine squared a minus sine a times sine a minus sine squared a right it comes from the double angle formula because you have cosine a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b if they're both the same cosine a cosine a cosine squared a minus sine a sine a sine squared a so that's one result and from this result we can use the fact that um you know cosine squared a is one minus sine squared a in which cases would be one minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a which is one minus two sine squared a or if you want to express it in terms of cosine squared a this will be um cosine squared a minus one minus cosine squared a the minus and minus gives you plus you'll end up with two cosine squared a minus one so these are the three ways that we can write cosine 2a that's the one way we can write sine to a so here with the numerator we don't really have a choice if you want to write this as a single angle we have to write it in terms of this so this is going to be minus two times two sine x cosine x and the denominator will have one plus now because i want to write it in terms of tan i know that the tan of x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x so i would like i think to have things in terms of cosine in the denominator because we know that sine over cosine is equal to tan so if i have cosines in the denominator it's more likely that i will get to my answer <coughs> in the quickest way so my cosine 2x i think i'll write it as 
2 cosine squared x minus 1. So I end up with cosine squared in, in the denominator. So now it looks like things are going to work out. You have dy dx equals, if I expand this, is minus 4 sine x cosine x over, now the 1's cancel out, 1 minus 1 is 0, is, is zero. you're left with 2 cosine squared x, which is the same as cosine x times cosine x. I'll write it like this because we can see that they cancel out. So we're left with minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2, sine x over cosine x, which is tan x. And that's exactly what we had to show, that it's c is a constant to be determined. So we can see that our value of c is negative 2. Okay, so we've written it in this form. We found the differential and written in this form, and we found that that constant c is negative 2. And there's the answer for this question, question number 2, part 2. And I think that is the end of question 2 from this um, C3 at Excel June 2019 paper. Um, as I said, this, ref this is related to P3. All of it's about differentiation. <clears throat> and um, so it's, I'm going to save this, this uh, video in the playlist over here, which is for this particular paper, the June 2019 C3 paper from Edexcel. I'll also save this under my P3 collection of differentiation questions, which will be found in this playlist over here. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so by clicking on this link. And you can watch a video over here, if you click on that, which will take you to, um, you know, uh, will explain to you how to use my channel in an efficient way and find what you need. Thank you for watching and see you soon.